gentlemen, I am the one and only DJ Storms! And in just days, live on the WWE Network. A woman poised for redemption will go up against the Queen of Spades for the NXT Women's Championship. Also, four of the black and gold brand's top teams will put their bodies on the line in a fatal four-way ladder match to crown new tag team champions of the world. And finally, a rebel heart poised on continuing his miraculous run as NXT champion will go up against the leader of the Undisputed Era, Baby, for the NXT World Championship. But before it is time to ascend that ladder to greatness, before it's time for the Undisputed Era's leader and that rebel heart to fight once again, before it is time to make history at NXT TakeOver 25, it's time for the rundown. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to get another video right here on YouTube.com. As of course, you already know who I am. Mr. Controversy and the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. This is the official rundown for NXT TakeOver 25, which is streaming live on the WWE Network this Saturday, June 1st, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It is Tuesday, uh, May 28th. Um, I would like to thank each and every single one of you again for tuning back into the channel. I would also like to apologize that there was no rewind for Double or Nothing I had to work. They put me on for Sundays while well, I get paid time and a half on Sundays. And then, of course, I got Memorial Day Memorial Day pay and obviously a little holiday pay never hurt me. But I did not have any time to record a rewind for Double or Nothing. I apologize about that. But I got a lot of content coming for you guys this week. I will talk about that in the end. But I am not alone. I am not alone here on the rundown. I am joined by a loyal member of the DJ Storms Posse, huge independent wrestling fan, and a huge Io Shirai mark. So you know he's going to be uh, talking a lot about Io Shirai in this video. Please help me welcome to the rundown for NXT TakeOver 25, Tyson Arnold. What's going on, Tyson? What's going on, Mr. DJ Storms? Good to see you again, and uh, very uh, welcome down to the channel. Uh, got a lot of shit to uh, take in today. Lots of stuff to talk about, and uh, you know, NXT Takeover, man. After la after Saturday night, they got to uh, have a blow away show. And uh, if oh no, no, I can trust, indeed they will. And that's Triple H. Indeed yeah, they will. That's Triple H. Anyway, uh, enough um, enough chit chat about uh, other shit. We're gonna dive straight into the matches. We got five matches confirmed for NXT Takeover twenty five. Um. The card itself, and let me let me tell you something. You take a look at this card, and it was pretty much built within a week, but yet we're more excited for this than we are for the matches at Super Showdown, and they announced the matches for Super Showdown two weeks ago. They have had two months to build towards Super Showdown. NXT TakeOver 25 wasn't even confirmed until like three weeks ago, if you logically think about it. That's going to show you how good Triple H really is, but never mind, and enough of that. First match, let's talk about the fatal four-way ladder match for the NXT Tag Team Titles. It is the Forgotten Sons versus Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch versus the Street Profits versus Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era for the vacated NXT Tag Team Titles. The War Raiders, or the Viking Raiders, or whatever the fuck you want to call them, they vacated the titles. Thus, William Regal made this match at TakeOver 25. I could not think of a bigger tag team match for NXT TakeOver 25. I am very much looking forward to seeing this. And, you know, you take a look at all four of these teams, and all four of these teams have good cases of why they should be tag team champions. Obviously, you got Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch, who have been a team for over a year, and they are really coming along as top baby faces on, um, on NXT. Obviously, you got the Forgotten Sons, who are coming along very nicely and have really come into their own as a strong heel stable 
And if they wanted to, they could give the titles to the Forgotten Sons as, you know, top heel champions for the time being. They could be transitional champions and end up giving it to the Street Profits at TakeOver Toronto if they want to give them to the Street Profits on a bigger stage. You got the Street Profits who have been with NXT for a... A good while now. I believe it's coming up on two years. They made their debut in 2017 before NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. So the Street Profits are definitely in top contention. They, they could be number two. Number one and number two is the Street Profits. If I was to pick two top teams, if I was to narrow this down to two teams, I would narrow it down to the Street Profits and the Undisputed Era. Now, I say the Undisputed Era because Adam Cole did say that the Undisputed Era will be draped in championship gold in 2019. If that's the case, and this is when it starts, if that's the case and this is when it starts, the Undisputed Era could make history and they could become the very first ever three-time NXT Tag Team Champions. So again, all four teams have vital cases of why they should be the winners of this match. Logically, if you think about it. And this is what I like about NXT because... NXT has a high unpredictability factor, but in a good way, because no matter who wins, everyone has a plan for them. And Triple H has a plan for anyone. That's why on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live, when we talk about it being unpredictable, it's not a good unpredictability factor because of the fact that you don't know where these guys are going to go. You don't know if Vince McMahon has, has any plans for them at all. But as far as this match goes... I think this is going to be a fantastic match. I believe it's going to kick off the show, just uh, like the NXT North American Championship ladder match kicked off the show. Um, I expect these four teams to absolutely tear each other apart. Do I think it's going to be better than the North American Championship ladder match? It certainly has the potential to. It certainly has the potential to. Hell, the North American Championship match got five stars by Meltzer. This match could get five stars as well. You never know. I am very much looking forward to this match. I can't wait to see what these four teams bring to the table. If I was to call, if I was to call a team to win it, you know what? I'm going to go with a bold prediction here, and I'm going to go with the Street Profits. A lot of people have been saying the Undisputed Era, the Undisputed Era, the Undisputed Era, but I actually think they're going to continue the storyline with the Undisputed Era, um, kind of cracking in a way, and I'm I think they're going to continue the storyline with the Undisputed Era breaking up. And I wouldn't say really breaking up, breaking up. I would just say Roderick Strong's leaving. And I'll talk about I'll talk about um, that when we talk about the Roderick Strong versus Matt Riddle match and then the main event. But as far as uh, this match goes, um, I'm going with the Street Profits. I think the Street Profits have spent a lot of time in NXT, and I think they are well overdue for an NXT championship reign in the tag team division, of course. Um, who they face off against at TakeOver Toronto, again, it really is a toss-up. I'm assuming it could either be Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch or the Forgotten Sons. Um, the Forgotten Sons definitely have been built up this entire year as a dominant heel stable, so I could see the Street Profits winning and going on to face the Forgotten Sons at TakeOver Toronto. And I think the Street Profits could very well hold the titles until NXT TakeOver War Games. We're going to see how that plays out. But as far as this match goes, I am going with the Street Profits to win the NXT Tag Team titles in this ladder match. It is Montez Ford and Angelo, Donc and, and Angelo Dawkins' time. Tyson, I'm going to hand this over to you. Give me your expertise analysis on this match and give me your prediction, and then we'll move on to the next match. So the main thing that we have to consider is the fact that the Undisputed Era, they're two-time NXT Tag Team Champions. And yes. Okay? Yes. So, when it comes to the fact that they've already been champions twice, mm -hmm. I do not see them winning this match. If I had to choose one, and this is going to surprise you, I would go with the Forgotten Sons. Really? And I'll, and I'll tell you why. They had such a great run during the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Yes. Uh, for finals. An obvious... We know what happened there. They ended up losing to Ricochet and Black because they were moving to the main roster. Right. Yeah. But they had that was their breakout moment. I think Triple H gives them the tag team championships and the Forgotten Sons, Wesley Blake and um, Steve Cutler. Steve Cutler. So Steve Cuff, uh, yeah, Steve Cutler. They're going to defend the tag team titles against the Street Profits. In my in my backyard of Toronto, Canada. Yes. So that should be rather interesting. I'm going with the Forgotten Sons. I think they've done a great job 
Now, the only eyesore is Jackson Riker, but even he is kind of uh, starting to grow on me a little bit. But then again, that's that NXT syndrome. Everything that Triple H does, does with purpose and does for a reason. And this is going to lead into my other predictions later on during the uh, video because I do not see uh, another member winning a said title. So we'll see what happens, but... Do I think this is going to be better than the NXT North American Championship ladder match from last year? Has potential. Being that uh, what we see on Saturday, I, I he's got to have a blowaway show. I'm gonna say it's gonna come close, but I think it falls just short. I mean that match last year was absolutely phenomenal. Everybody absolutely destroyed each other like ladder spots throughout for 35 minutes. You know, we'll see what happens, but um, like I said, I'm going to go with the Forgotten Sons to win the NXT Tag Team Championships, and I'm going with the Forgotten Sons versus the Street Profits at Toronto. So we'll you know that happens. Oni Lork, you know Oni Lorkin's going to do something that that's going to damn near kill himself in this well, match. Well, the thing what I was going to say is he's probably going to. Do you remember how uh, Jeff Hardy used to do that spot where he'd jump over the ladder? Yes. Yes. And do a, a senton. Yes. I think he's going to do that, miss, and go right through two ladders on the outside. Please so. don't kill yourself, Oni. We need you to be yeah. healthy for SummerSlam because Oni and Tony Nice are on a collision course for the Cruiserweight title at SummerSlam. Just saying. That would actually be pretty good. That would be actually pretty good. All right, pretty next good. match. Let's talk about Roderick Strong versus Matt Riddle. This match came bro. about. Bro. Let me know, bro. bro. So, this match came about because Roderick Strong took out Matt Riddle in the parking lot um, to pretty much uh, get on Adam Cole's good side again. So, this match came about all members of the Undisputed. I think this is the first time that all members of the Undisputed Era are competing at a takeover in separate matches. All of them are competing in separate matches. So, I am very much looking forward to this match for uh, multiple reasons. Number one, it has the potential to be perhaps one of the, probably the most underrated match of the night. I mean, Matt Riddle and Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong is a very underrated singles competitor when you take a look back at his singles run before he joined the Undisputed Era. Matt Riddle, we all know how good Matt Riddle is, and they're doing good on Matt Riddle, not inserting him into the championship title picture too soon. They've done a good job with Matt Riddle. They've booked Matt Riddle in a... Very good babyface-like role. Almost an underdog role, but they ke they've they kept a certain level of dominance with Matt Riddle during his NXT run ever since he came to NXT in October. And one thing I love about... One thing I love about uh, this match is it has the potential to be probably the most hard-hitting match of the night because both of these men, they are very straightforward, very to the point, very intense... I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they're Frankie Kazarian intense because Frankie Kazarian, what he was bringing to the table at um at um uh, double or nothing, I love the intensity that Frankie Kazarian has to offer. That's just like, that's just my little plug for double or nothing. Um, I, I I love the intensity that Frankie Kazarian brings to the table, but uh, Roderick Strong, he's a very intense player, as is Matt Riddle, as is Matt Riddle, and I think this is going to be a very intense match. Um, I would say this goes about maybe 14, 15 minutes. And if I was to call a winner, you see, they could they could really swing either way. They could swing either way on this one. They could have Roderick Strong win and kind of build up Roderick Strong to a certain extent in this mentality that he doesn't need the Undisputed Era and he could be the only member of the Undisputed Era that comes out victorious. Or they could give it to Matt Riddle because of the fact that Matt Riddle is currently being built up for bigger and better things. And based off of that fact alone, I'm going to go with Matt Riddle to defeat Roderick Strong. And I believe that Matt Riddle is going to factor into bigger plans when we get to take over Toronto. And I will tell you what those plans are after we talk about the main event. But I'm going to hand this back over to Tyson Arnold. Give me your expertise analysis on this match and who do you think is going to come out victorious? Okay, so being I'm a under sorry, I'm a uh, independent wrestling fan. Yes, I have seen a lot of Matt Riddle uh, beforehand before he came to NXT. Uh, he had a great uh, run in pro sorry, a great run in Evolve. Yeah, and uh, 
was their world champion, uh, had some great matches with Chris Hero, Cassius Ono, and uh, Keith Lee as well. Roderick Strong is an interesting case. Um, the thing with him is, is that the Undisputed Era has been such a blessing for him, and the fact that, you know, when he first came in, he didn't really have that identity, but when he finally said, you know, enough is enough, they decided to put him with his friends being Kyle O'Reilly, uh, Bobby Fish, and Adam Cole, baby. You know, I thought that was a great move, and it really solidified him to being a top guy in NXT. Yes. Regardless of world championship or not. So, but the thing that I am worried about is that I feel Vince McMahon wants the other three, but he doesn't want Roddy. I feel like this is an agenda from him. Because I think rather they're going to be called up sometime in in the summer, but regardless of that, Matt Riddle and uh, Roderick Strong that's going to be a very hard hitting match. I expect a very good brawl between these two. Matt Riddle is just as lethal as anybody in NXT right now in terms of striking ability. He's got great ground game, great submissions. Roddy is one of the most legit guys. If you remember when he was chopping Daniel Bryan in, in that uh, Jesus. Uh, match. Uh, it's like it's the, like someone took yeah. a cheese grater and just ran yeah, it along Bryan's chest. chest. Yeah, it was absolutely brutal. So you can't count him out for uh, anything like that. But uh, if I had to choose a winner, I can't bet against the bro Matt Riddle. I feel like he needs he is going to be the main star of this entire brand by early 2020. Or, or by the summertime. I see him as the NXT champion after Toronto. So, that being said, I'm going with, with Matt Riddle to defeat Roderick Strong in about a 15-minute match as a buffer after the I wouldn't match. say any NXT match is a buffer. Well, you know what I mean. Usually when there's five matches, there's one come-down match. And yeah, but even a come down, even a calm down yeah, match know. is a great match. I know what you're, I know, I know what you're saying, but... You know, that that is the thing with this pay-per-view. I mean, the crowd, after that ladder match, they're going to be wiped out. And I already know that. But either way, it's going to be a great match. And I expect the bro to get the win over Roderick Strong. So. Yo, you, you did mention that you think that Roderick Strong getting kicked out of the Undisputed Era might have been a Vince McMahon initiative. You know, you know to yeah. a certain extent, I would agree with you, but... There hasn't been. I don't been, think he sees anything in him. But but you need to you need to remember that with all of the inside sources that you know all of these um, people and journalists have within the WWE, mm-hmm. guys like Sean Ross Sapp or uh, Dave Meltzer or Cage Side Seats or PW Insider and all all of these very credible sources, you would think that something would come out. Something would have came out in like the last two months. Because, like, the storyline's been developing for two months now. It's not just a two-week-old storyline. It's been developing since TakeOver New York. So you would think that one of these credible sources would have came out with the report that had something to do with Roderick Strong and why they are going along with this storyline. But I have heard no reports from any sources, whether it be from SAP, from Meltzer, from Cage Side Seats, PW Insider... Um, wrestle votes. I have heard no reports whatsoever of Vince McMahon not liking Roderick Strong or not uh, wanting to call up Roderick Strong with the rest of the era. So I don't really, I don't really, I don't really know because, like, again, yeah, that, you would think that there would be a report to come out. That is true. That is true. But I, I, I just have this feeling like he's going to be, oh well, you know, he's a good-looking guy and all that can wrestle, but he's two hundred five left. No, he's not. He's so much. He's not. He's not. But at this rate, he's not. But at this rate, you need to remember. Maybe Triple H is doing this on purpose to put him on Two Hundred Five Live because Two Hundred Five Live really do need some help. Yeah, exactly. Two Hundred Five Live. It's still a great show, and I say it every single week. Mm. Triple H has a depleted roster with Two Hundred Five Live, but he's still putting on a very good show with Two Hundred Five Live, and that that is saying something. That is definitely saying something. But they really need some help on Two Hundred Five Live, and I think if they wanted to. Roderick Strong being on 205 Live would really help the brand. And and on top of that, you have to remember that Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali, they all got called up. So in a way, 205 yeah, Live... Yeah, she's gone. <laughs> yeah, 
What? Yeah, speaking of uh, Buddy Murphy, he's not even on the show. I don't even know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing with him. I'm going, I'm I'm trying, I'm looking for some reports on what they're doing with him. But as far as um, 205 Live goes, as far as that goes, it's almost, I don't want to say just yet, but it's almost becoming a second version of NXT. And I think that Tony Nese, and I think that Tony Nese, could very well be the next guy to come up at the next superstar shakeup after he loses the cruiserweight title and he drops that title to Oni Lorcan. Good point. So I don't know what's going on there, but I will keep you guys posted on uh, if I do hear any reports on why they're going ahead with this Roderick Strong storyline and what's going on with Buddy Murphy. But anyway, let's move on to the next match. Let's talk about the NXT North American Championship ladder match. Tyler Breeze is back in NXT. The Sultan of Selfies, Prince Pretty, is back. He is taking on the Velveteen Dream for the North American Championship. This will be Velveteen Dream's third title defense. And this match, I mentioned this on the 13th Storm stream with Kelly Hopkins. Shout out to her if you want to go uh, follow her on um, Twitter. It's at Respian. Um, follow her on Facebook uh, at Kelly Hopkins. Uh, Kelly spelt K-E-L-L-E-Y. Uh, shout out to her. The 13th Storm Stream is doing great, by the way. It's over 20 likes, over 110 plus views. 13th Storm Stream is doing great, by the way. Kelly Hopkins is definitely a draw for this channel. But I mentioned this on the Storm Stream, and I said that the reason why Triple H is doing this, because remember, Tyler Breeze didn't do anything to deserve an NXT North American Championship match. But the reason why Triple H is doing this is because Tyler Breeze was really the original flamboyant, cocky, just very outspoken individual in NXT. I don't want to say he was the original Velveteen Dream because he wasn't. He was just really a flashy, in-your-face type of guy who was putting on great matches. And Velveteen Dream is almost like an updated version of Tyler Breeze, but turned up tenfold, and he's just as flashy and flamboyant and outspoken and in-your-face. So in a way, I guess Triple H wanted to bring back a quote-unquote NXT legend because NXT TakeOver 25, it's almost like the 25th anniversary of his own WrestleMania. And in a way, WrestleMania, we've seen how the legends come back and they honor the legends but honor the new people as well. So I think Triple H did this to get an NXT legend versus an NXT current guy in a marquee match because this is his version of WrestleMania and he wanted to do an old school versus new school type match. And in this case, I really have no problem with it because of the fact that the motive behind it isn't some fucked up agenda or it's not favoritism towards anyone. Triple H is not fa- is not favoring anyone in this instance. Meanwhile, when Vince McMahon does shit like this, he is clearly playing favorites and he is clearly pushing an agenda that nobody wants and no one gives a shit about. But you take a look at this match and this is quote unquote a very underrated dream match that not many of us really would have thought of and not many of us would have ever imagined would have even happened. But Triple H made it possible. And I think that this could very well, this could very well be the most entertaining match of the night. And I'm talking about like Aleister Black versus Velveteen Dream entertaining. That had great wrestling in it, but the storyline built in that match and the story they told in the ring, that was that that made the match ten times as as um as uh, better than if there was no storyline told in that match. It was almost like the same thing with the Gargano and Cole match from NXT TakeOver New York. The storyline told in the ring and the storyline for both men made that match that much better. And I think that it's going to make this match that much better because of the old school versus new school vibe. Tyler Breeze, you gotta remember, he's very underrated in the ring. He is very underappreciative. He's very underappreciated as well. And I am very much looking forward to this match. I believe uh, Tyler Breeze is back in NXT full-time. So you know Tyler Breeze is going to get the opportunities that he should have gotten. And he's going to be put in a lot more marquee matches than you think in NXT. As far as the uh, match itself goes, I think it's going to be a great match. This could very well be one of the best matches of the year if they want to go forth with it. This could very well, this takeover could very well go over three hours if Triple H really wants to outshine Double or Nothing. And with Velveteen Dream and Tyler Breeze... This, this this match could very well be the match of the night. It could very well be the match of the night. As, for, as far as the winner goes, 
look, it's going to be a fantastic match, but at the end of the day, it is the most predictable match. I'm going with Velveteen Dream to retain the North American Championship, and if I was to go with a possible future opponent for uh, Velveteen Dream, possibly at TakeOver Toronto, I think that they're going to build up Keith Lee. I think that Keith Lee has been with NXT for a while, and Keith Lee has spent a good amount of time in NXT. Now he's starting to uh, get some wins behind him, and I think that they're going to build up Keith Lee to take the North American title off of Velveteen Dream, and Velveteen Dream could very well be called up either after SummerSlam or after NXT TakeOver War Games. I think. Or demoted. Yeah, or, or demoted. Demoted in this case. But regardless, I think he's going up to either Raw or SmackDown. I don't know which brand he's going on. Both brands could really use some someone like Velveteen Dream and a complete re and a complete uh, revamping at that. But um, as far as um, this match goes, I'm going with Velveteen Dream to retain the North American Championship in what could possibly be the best match of the night. Um, a match that's not going to be a spot fest like the ladder match. But again, no, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that in a way of saying that this match could very well be the best wrestling match. And that could very well, it could very well steal the show. So I'm going to hand this back over to Tyson Arnold. Give me your expertise analysis on this match and your prediction on the North American title match between Dream and Breeze. So, uh, as most know, I actually watched NXT from the very first episode that debuted on, on the WWE Network. Yeah. Tyler Breeze was one of those guys that had the potential to be NXT champion, and for whatever reason, he just got held back, held back, held back. I think it was wrong and, place, and wrong a, time. Wrong, that, that was kind of the idea, yeah. There was, you know, Prince Devitt, Finn Balor came in. He was a, a main player. Yes. Samoa Joe came in from TNA. That was a huge deal. Uh, Kevin Owens for, or Kevin Steen from Ring of Honor, he came in. So it was the wrong place at the wrong time for this guy. Yes. But it never took away from how charismatic and how good he was in the ring. Um, to me, he is a version, he is basically a hybrid of Mr. Perfect, Shawn Michaels, and Bret the Hitman Hart. Yes. He really it has all those aspects. The only thing he's he just is missing is the size. And I know that's a big thing to a guy like Vince McMahon. So to have him back in NXT is a great thing. They they need uh, you know some extra star power. Getting an NXT legend for the TakeOver 25, uh, 25 anniversary event was a great choice by Triple H. And uh, I mean it's going to be it's going to be one of those matches where you know like you mentioned with Alistair Black and with. The Velveteen Dream, that was Dream's coming out match. Yes. And and Black made him into a star that day. This is the same gonna be the same kind kind of thing here. Only Dream is much more experienced at this point. I feel that this match will be the best match of the night. Yes, over the main event, I'll tell you why. A lot of people love wrestling. They love pure wrestling, right? But what those two guys can could do is give you an amazing story of two flamboyant guys that are trying to outdo one another. They can play, use playing up to the crowd as part of their act. Absolutely. And and the main the main thing is that they get you invested in every single move, every big spot, and every little moment. Out from the ed, from the entrances to whatever they're doing in the ring to commentary with Morrow. I think this is going to be the match of the night. If they give these guys 20 minutes to go out there and tear, tear, tear the building down, this could actually be one of the best matches of the entire year. And I think, and you, I know think that, you know what else? You know what else? You know what else? You know, you mentioned that, you know, the Aleister Black match, that was Dream's coming out match. That made Velveteen Dream into a star. I think that now Velveteen Dream is going to recreate the star that is Tyler Breeze. This is going to get Breeze back on that so. level again. I believe so. And like I uh, mentioned... I watch a lot of wrestling, so my standards are are very, very high when it comes to uh, to match quality, right? Yes. Uh, Mine but, too. You know, and that's saying something. To put that match alongside of Tanahashi's and Omega's and, you know, all those other ones from yes. New Japan that do it so regularly, I think it's going to be one of those matches that's going to be absolutely must-see by the end of the year, and you're going to go back and watch it multiple times. As far as the winner goes... 
I, you know, I, I, I want to say the upset, but mm, I can't. I, I don't can't think go, so. I can't go with. I can't go with with Tyler Breeze on this one. I got to go with the Velveteen Dream. The Dream is as white hot as anybody right now in the WWE, um, and he's one of the hottest guys right now in the entire industry right yes. now. Honestly, and I am deathly afraid of the day Vince McMahon gets his hands on Patrick Clark. Don't even, I mean, don't honest, even remind me, dude. Don't even remind me. They already yeah, fucked up yeah. Ricochet. They already fucked up I, Ricochet. I, I know, I know, I know. But regardless of that, you know, Dream could be honestly a, a superstar in any promotion. NXT is where he belongs. But eventually, it's going to happen. As far as a winner goes, I'm going with the Velveteen Dream. And what my future opponent is, while you mentioned Keith Lee, I'm going a slightly different route. Toronto is in the same month as All Out. Yes. Toronto is in the same month as All Out. I think they're going to start building up Shane the Swerve Strickland to take Whoa. on the Velveteen Dream at TakeOver Toronto 2. And that's going to be the match for the North American Shane Championship. Shane Strickling. You, you can't... You, oh, Sh- uh, you know, I, for, I, for, I forgot. Um, you can't leave Kushida out of it. You could... Now, this is an idea that, that could work as well. Have Shane Strickland, the Velveteen Dream, Keith Lee, and Kushida in a fatal four-way match. For if they the really want to make it big... If they really yeah. want to make it big, I think that that would be one of the best routes to go. I would fucking I th- love yeah. that match. I think that would be a good idea, especially because being that all out is going to be at the end of the month, yeah. Triple H is going to want to... Uh, well, first of all, we know SummerSlam probably not going to be as good. It yeah. always never is. But never is. regardless of that, he's got to have a blowaway show. As far as every show that has an accompanying... AEW event, he needs to make it feel just as big, if not more special, than their events. Because they are a competition, and anybody that believes that they're not competition, considering John Moxley wanted to go out there and put a declaration of war on Vince McMahon in WWE, and everything to do with Cody Rhodes, you know, taking hit the hammer and putting it on the throne, that was basically the biggest fuck you he could have possibly done. So, Regardless of that, I think that that match would be absolutely brilliant on a show that I expect to be... I wouldn't... It's going to be, I would say, maybe not quite as good as New York. I don't think anything in the entire world is going to be better than New York. You know Triple H is going to try and top it. I know he'll he'll try, but it's going to be a very, very difficult task. When you had Walter and Pete Dunne in that excellent... UK title match. That's I'm going on my top 10. Minutes. That's going on my top 10. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously Gargano and Cole. The weakest match was the fucking women's match. And it was better than every women's match this year. So what the fuck does that say? The women's match. Know? Did the women's match itself was better than, than 90% of WrestleMania's card. I know. It's fucking. It's completely fucked up. But anyways, we're going completely off topic yeah. here. But yeah. You know, I'm going one with Velveteen Dream. And... I'm expecting him to have a breakout performance here, even though he's had many before. Yeah. This might be his greatest test to go. So, let's talk about the NXT Women's Championship match between Io Shirai and Shayna Baszler. Now, this has the potential to be a great women's match, which I which I know it will be, because both women are fantastic at what they do. But, here's the deal. As far as the winner goes, again, this is where the unpredictability factor with NXT comes into play. Every single time, every single time in a, in an NXT Women's Championship match where Shayna Baszler is the is in the prime spot to lose, she wins. It's happened at Evolution. It happened at Takeover War Games Two. It happened at Takeover Phoenix. It happened at Takeover New York. Every single time, Shayna Baszler is in a prime position to lose the title and get called up to the main roster, she wins and she retains the title. Now, why is that? I think, personally, it has to do with the fact that Vince McMahon, I don't think Vince McMahon has any plans for Shayna Baszler. Does he even like Shayna Baszler? Is he even a fan of Shayna Baszler? Because Shayna Baszler 
you know, you know, she has she's had uh, opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to lose the title and then get called up to the main roster, and they haven't done it. And I think it has something to do with Vince McMahon just not being a fan of Shayna Baszler and not just not having any plans for Shayna Baszler. Maybe Triple H, Triple H does not want to see the same thing happen to Shayna Baszler as it happened to Asuka. After Triple H put all that effort into Asuka and Vince McMahon just completely killed her after she lost her undefeated streak and it just completely killed her mystique. She she was pretty much buried throughout the entire the entire rest of the year of 2018. And then she was pretty much given the SmackDown Live Women's Championship just to keep her happy so she doesn't jump shift to AEW or get frustrated. And I think that what's going on with Asuka right now is still WWE trying to push Asuka to a point where she's not unhappy. And I think that's what they're going to do when they give Asuka and Kyrie Sane the NXT, or not the NXT, the Women's Tag Team titles. I think if they fast track Kyrie Sane to the women's tag team titles after only being on the main roster for a month, then you know That's it's because, yeah, it's yeah. clarification that they're doing it to push Asuka to keep her happy so she's not as frustrated as people like The Revival and Sasha and Moxley, among others. So, again, I think that Triple H, Triple H, he knows that Vince McMahon, he he just doesn't want Shayna Baszler on the main roster. Vince McMahon could very well not not even be a fan of Shayna Baszler, and he doesn't have any plans for Shayna Baszler. And that's why Shayna Baszler keeps on retaining the title because Vince McMahon doesn't have any plans for her, and you know they you know he doesn't want to see Triple H does not want to see the same thing happen with Shayna Baszler as it happened with Asuka. So again, that plays a huge factor into this match because realistically, this this is Io Shirai's time. Shayna Baszler has been prone to lose the title for a while now. So I, I, I really think that, uh, you know, it's Io Shirai's time. You know, my, head say, my heart says Io Shirai because it's, it's her time. But my head says Shayna Baszler because of the fact that, you know, again, Vince McMahon most likely does not have any plans for Shayna Baszler at all. And Triple H is not just going to let Shayna Baszler go after he's built her up to be pretty much a low-key version of Asuka, a low-key version of Asuka, and he doesn't want to see the same thing happen with Shayna Baszler as it happened with Asuka on the main roster. So I, I really don't think that Shayna Baszler's losing the title until Toronto at, 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 the, at, the, at the latest. I think Shayna Baszler's losing the title at Toronto. To whom? I don't know. At this rate, I think it's going to be Io Shirai at Toronto. But, you know, they could, they could go ahead and they could have Io Shirai defeat Shayna Baszler at NXT TakeOver 25, and we could get Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae at TakeOver, at TakeOver Toronto. That, that's, a huge, that's a huge option right there because they have been building up Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae has been on a good winning streak. But again, the unpredictability factor mixed with the statement that I just said about Vince McMahon not being a fan of Shayna Baszler and most likely having no plans for Shayna Baszler, I really have no choice but to go with Shayna Baszler on this one. I, I really don't know. It's very hard for me to root against Shayna Baszler with the fact that, you know, there's been no reports of Shayna Baszler going up to the main roster. There's been no reports of Shana, of Vince McMahon wanting Shayna Baszler. And Triple H, he just doesn't want an another Asuka incident. That's why I'm going with Shayna Baszler. Even though I want I want Io Shirai, but I'm calling Shayna Baszler. I'm going to hand this over to you, Tyson. The first thing I want to mention is a couple of my favorites. Io Shirai, Tessa Blanchard, Sasha Banks, Kyrie Sane, Asuka. Those women define professional wrestling Indeed. better than anyone right now in the business. I feel cheated to the fact that we did not get Kyrie Sane versus Io Shirai at New York. And it pains me with a burning passion that I couldn't get to see the stardom dream match on a takeover. But regardless of that, Io has been built up very nicely over the last uh, number of uh, months. Ever since, you know, she didn't get pinned. She didn't get uh, she didn't get pinned. Bianca Belair ended up taking the, the tap out. At, uh, yeah, by tap out by the Carafuda clutch. But the thing with the thing with this match, I'm going to say this with real realistic possibility here. The, the raw women's division is absolutely pathetic at this point they just they, they just don't well, yeah they don't have they they, they refuse they to build well up anyone 
they might feet. as well not exist, right? Alexa Bliss is out. We have Alicia Irrelevant Fox that's not even being used. She's absolutely horrendous at everything she does. Clearly. We have, we have Ruby Riot who's out with injury. God bless her soul. Hope she does. She gets back to uh, full recovery. Yes. We have Sarah Logan not being used. She could have been used with the fucking War Raiders. They could have they could have used her part of, as that. They refused to do so. They had Lacey Evans win one fucking match versus who was it? Was it Dana Brooke? No, I against Natalia. Oh, uh, against Natalia. Whatever. Regardless of that, wins and losses need to fucking matter in WWE. And you can't just have one person win one match, and then be considered the number one contender. Do titles fucking mean anything nowadays? Jim Ross said it best. I Honestly, I don't understand why we can't have competitive matches each single week to get, say, the number two contender versus the number three contender or the four versus the third to get some kind of momentum going. A competitive division. There is none. Stability. Exactly. There is none. So this is going to factor into my decision. Becky Lynch has no opponents for stomping ground. She has no opponents, period, outside of maybe Bailey and a title versus title match. I don't think they're going with a title versus title match. I think based on what what's been going on, I think they're continuing. Probably another match with Lacey. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Realist realistically, we should get we should get Becky versus Nikki Cross. Or or Nikki Cross. I would love to see that match. I think that would be a great SummerSlam match. I think that'd be great. But, um, yeah, I mean, Io Shirai, she's had a tough time uh, trying to get any kind of momentum until New York. And now she's really starting to come into her own. Not far as matches go, but far as building a presence that casual fans need to care about this woman. Yes. Right? She came out there on on last week on NXT wailing that fucking kendo stick around. Yeah, that was was, was fucking amazing. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, like um, Karushita fucking did to Aja Kong at uh, a double or nothing there. And um, she's built, really building herself up uh, well right now. Like you mentioned, like you mentioned with, with Shayna Baszler, you think that she's not going to go up to the main roster because of Vince and the fact that she is 38 years old. That does play a factor into it, but at this rate, they have absolutely nobody that they can put faith in because Vince McMahon is a fucking moron. I don't know. I don't know rather what to say other than the fact is they need Shayna Baszler on the fucking main roster. Desperately, it's absolutely inexcusable. It's absolutely inexcusable why they can't start building talent to have. The weekly fans of the main roster programming give a shit about women's fucking wrestling. I hate to go into a huge rant here, but I love women's wrestling more than just about anyone right now. And when I see two-minute fucking matches on the main roster, I absolutely go ballistic and infuriated. That's why you see me getting 50 likes on pretty much everything now when it comes to trashing the goddamn main roster. You know, I speak the truth just like you speak the truth. You're damn right. And the truth is this is why yeah. I, this is why I have them on my channel. It's exactly yeah. why. And I'll t- yeah, and I'll honestly say I hold nothing back. But you know what? You can like what you like. I can like what I like. But the fact remains: when you have the twenty four seven championship as the most fucking important thing on the main roster, and I literally sent this to you. Did I not send this to you a couple days ago? I sent out a tweet with clown music. You see, fucking yeah. uh, and Chris, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Chris, Chris yeah. used it, and Chris used it. Yeah, yeah, he used it on his channel. Fucking no way, Jose coming out in a goddamn tutu. What the <laughs> fuck am I watching? You know? All right, let, let's. You got more yeah. raw. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, like, I, well, fuck whatever. yeah, fuck that, fuck this is it. This is this isn't about the main roster. This is about NXT. Yeah, so, what's yeah. your prediction on this match? I know. I, Okay, so prediction all wise, like I mentioned, Shayna Baszler is needed on the main roster. I'm going with Io Shirai here. This is her time. If I had to pick a an opponent for her at SummerSlam weekend, Toronto, it's a tough call because Candice LeRae is one of those women that has been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for an opportunity. Um, 
I could see it being a triple threat with Candice and Bianca Belair. Okay. Or I could see it be, or I could see it being Io Shirai versus Bianca Belair. I think Shayna Baszler's time is done. What I do see happening is Marina Shafir breaking away from Jessamyn Duke. I think she's going to be a, a new member of the Undisputed Era. Really? So you don't think the and Undisputed think Era is breaking up? You think they're adding a new member? They're going to. They're going to have Roderick Strong leave, and they're going to bring in Marina. Sh- uh, we're going to have uh, actually what that doesn't really uh, rather make much sense. But they could. What they could realistically do is have the Undisputed Era debut on the main roster with Marina Shafir to give that extra the extra incentive to actually watch a Raw or SmackDown. Because remember, Fox has their deal coming up soon, and they're going to need extra star power, especially yes. with this whole bullshit wildcard rule. So anyway, you know, Shirai for the win. It's going to be... I've seen their match at Stardom. The last match was uh, that they had was in Stardom. It was very, very physical, very technical-based at the beginning, and then it really picked up in the latter half. Um, you know, Shirai ended up picking up the win in a Retaining the Ulster Championship. I expecting a great match here and Ish Rai, the new face of the NXT women's division. So we're gonna leave it at that because if I talk about this anymore, I'm going to lose my shit. Okay. So while Tyson Arnold attempts not to have an aneurysm while we're recording this, let's move on to the main event, which is the NXT championship match between Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano rematch from TakeOver New York. This is not a two out of three falls match, this is a regular match. There's not really much I can say about this match. It is going to be a fantastic match, just like it was in New York. I don't think it's going to outshine what they did in New York because NXT TakeOver New York was something special. NXT TakeOver New York had two men who were on a mission. They were on a mission for themselves, and the story pretty much wrote itself right from the beginning. And the match itself, from from start to finish, that two out of three falls match, 40 minutes... 40 minutes of pure excellence. There was really nothing else. Nothing else that um, could have been done to make that match any more perfect. Johnny Gargano, with that win, solidified himself as NXT's top dog. At this rate, um, I don't think Adam Cole is going to be NXT champion. I think that Johnny Gargano is going to retain the title here against Adam Cole. And he's going to move on towards... NXT TakeOver Toronto to battle Matt Riddle, and I believe that Matt Riddle is going to be the one to dethrone Johnny Gargano, and Matt Riddle is going to be NXT champion. Matt Riddle is going to carry that title into 2020, and depending on who we have in NXT, depending on who they bring in, because you know that Triple H is going to be looking to recruit a lot of new signees. You know Triple H is going to be looking to recruit a lot of new signees, depending on who they bring in. You know, Matt Riddle could very well end up holding the title until WrestleMania 36 weekend at NXT TakeOver Tampa. Um, I think that they're going to continue the storyline with Roderick Strong and the Undisputed Era. And Roderick Strong could very well end up breaking up or breaking away from the Undisputed Era. And we could end up getting Roderick Strong versus Adam Cole at NXT TakeOver Toronto. And, you know, you got that match. You got Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. You got... Johnny Gargano and Matt Riddle, that sounds like a huge two-match lineup already for NXT TakeOver Toronto. So you're going to be in for a treat, Tyson Arnold. But um, I'll be live there. Yeah. I'll be live. So I don't think any of that's going to start, though, until we get that closing sequence in the... that closing um, scene to end TakeOver of Johnny Gargano retaining the NXT title over Adam Cole. I don't think it's going to be as good as their match from TakeOver... To, uh, take over New York, but it's definitely going to be a great match, and it's definitely going to outshine nearly everything that WWE is going to put out at Super Showdown, and it's definitely going to outshine anything that Vince put on at Money in the Bank as well. I'm going to hand this over to you. Expertise analysis and prediction on the final match before we get out of here. I love Johnny Gargano. I love Johnny Gargano. I love Adam Cole. I think Adam Cole has been absolutely brilliant ever since joining uh, NXT coming over from Ring of Honor in New Japan. I think there that the whole Undisputed Era is a nice, great take on the Bullet Club and a nice WWE-styled way. I think it's awesome. Johnny Gargano, to me, to me, he's the very best 
right now in the entire WWE. Hard there's to nobody that touches that man. Yeah, there's nobody that touches that man in terms of pure wrestling excellence. In terms of uh, wrestling excellence, he may lack size. But he also is a, is a decent promo. You cannot take that away from, from Johnny. When he gets fired up, he can get you excited for anything that he does. He's also quite um, quite uh, quick-witted as well, uh, even though he's got some lame jokes, you know. Regardless of that... Hey, Adam Cole didn't shock match, the school system. He didn't shock the school system. No, he did not. Um, that was a great segment, by the way. Absolutely. Um, so with this with this match, it's a t- uh, you know what? It's a toss-up. My... I feel like Adam Cole needs the title, but at the same time, he doesn't need the championship because simply because if you now someone else that I watch said this best, if you are the very best at what you do, you should be the world champion. It's just the way it is when it comes to the business. Johnny Gargano has been the absolute best since I'm going to say, well, Tommaso Ciampa, because Tommaso Ciampa was really the best champion in the last five years or so for the NXT brand. Either way you look at it, Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole, they have such great chemistry. They gel so well together. Their match at New York was was probably the match of the year. Without a doubt. I'm going to disagree with you. I, I have, I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I actually think that these guys are going to go the distance. I honestly believe that Triple H is going to... Unfortunately, have to cut a little bit of the, the other matches. I think that maybe... Strong, strong, and Riddle might be cut a little bit short as far and and also the opener with the tag. I mean, it's a ladder match. You don't need to go thirty minutes for it. You could just do enough crazy spots in ten or fifteen, right? I honestly think that with Johnny and with Cole, they're going to try to outdo the original. And being it's the twenty fifth anniversary, remember, being if it's a twenty fifth anniversary show, they're going to pull out all the stops. I feel like in a straight one-on-one match, they're going to go the distance. I think this is going to go damn near fifty minutes um, Jesus. with this one, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna go with with Johnny Gargano winning with the slingshot DDT. Uh, I'm gonna go with Johnny to retain the NXT Championship. I feel like he is only uh, just beginning uh, his title reign it makes absolutely no sense to take it off of him yeah 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 right now if they, if they were going to do that they they well we know we know this was was the plan all along it was going to be Johnny against Champa unfortunately Champa got hurt because of McMahon's stupid recklessness regardless exactly. of that we had we was, that was supposed to happen he was supposed to be Champa and then Cole was supposed to be Gargano at this at the San Jose Takeover show, and then he was supposed to go up to the main roster. But you know, it is what it is, and I'm going with Matt Riddle versus again Johnny Gargano at Toronto. It's going to be a hell of a hell of a match. Um, Adam Cole, he's honestly bulletproof at this point. He's not like Samoa Joe, where he says all these things and then you can't believe a goddamn thing that he says. You know. It's you know it sucks because Joe's so great, but yeah, I feel like Adam Cole is one of those guys that doesn't need the NXT Championship to survive on the NXT brand. I think he's so well liked and so respected that you know I don't think he needs the title. I really don't think he needs the title. And sooner or later, if if Vince McMahon doesn't see anything in this guy, then he's really losing his mind. Adam Cole is. Is and kind of does look like Shawn Michaels in a lot of way, in a lot of ways. So, and he's you know he's twenty seven years old. He's young enough. I could see this guy being WWE champion without a doubt, with or without the undisputed without, without the, a even without the undisputed. Really doubt. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to go with Johnny to retain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of the rundown. I'd like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. Um, couple of things. Do not forget to follow me on uh, Twitter at Man of Infamy. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram, at the DJ Storms. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. We are over 1,060 subscribers. We are on the road toward 1,100. So, if you are a regular fan here and a member of the DJ Storms Posse, continue to promote and promote and promote because we are trying to get to 2,000, hopefully by the end of the year. I am planning on it. 
Um, do not forget to hit that notifications bell with a huge coup de gras. That way, you will know whenever I pop up on YouTube. Because whenever I pop up on YouTube, it is the best time to be on YouTube. Also, this Friday, Lightning Flash Update Parts 1 and 2 will be up. Uh, I will be doing a rewind for NXT TakeOver 25. I don't know when I'm going to be doing it. Most likely, it'll probably be up... It'll probably be up by... Mm, I would say Monday. I would say I'd probably get that up by Monday. And then next... Um, next Sunday, actually, or this Sunday, actually, this Sunday, June 2nd, live on Twitter, me and my personal drummer, JB Thunder, we are going live on Periscope for the very first ever Thunderscope live stream, where he will be doing his own personal performances. Go follow him on Twitter at JV Thunder one we are doing Keep Your Eye on the Money by Motley Crue. That is going to be the very first ever Thunderscope live stream where he is doing his own performance of Motley Crue's Keep Your Eye on the Money. And then the next Thunderscope should be on the 21st before WWE Stomping Grounds. Next Friday, after Super Showdown, me and your boy Chris. Chris from Loring. Uh, that's his uh, Twitter, at Chris from Loring. But he is on uh, YouTube, at your boy Chris. We are collaborating. We are joining forces for the the uh, 14th Special Edition Stormstream. That will take place in the evening on Friday, June 7th, after Super Showdown. We got a lot of hot topics to discuss. Go and subscribe to him if you haven't already subscribed to him. He is dangerously close to 100 subscribers. He's one of the fastest rising analysts and YouTubers in the community. Tyson, where can we find you on social media? On social media, you can find me at TysonRL97. I am very active, as most people on the internet know. Uh, like mentioned, if you uh, like any kind of wrestling, independent wrestling, uh, WWE wrestling, New Japan wrestling, AW, anything like that, hit, hit me up. We can talk about you know wrestling for uh, for hours, and uh, you know hope to see you guys soon. It was a great time being. Uh, Mr. DJ Storm's uh, podcast. Hope to do more work with him. I'm not a podcaster. I'm just a YouTuber. Future. I'm not a podcaster. I'm just a YouTuber. Yeah. Well, YouTuber, podcaster. In any case, you have a great voice and a great mind for the business, as most of us in the well, most smart uh, people in most the community. Most smart people. Rather. We can't say the same smart thing people. about certain individuals. Hint, hint. Certain individuals. Yeah. But regardless of that, I uh, would like to thank you, everyone, for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the one and only DJ Storms. He's Tyson Arnold, and this has been The Rundown. I will catch you guys Friday for LFU Parts 1 and 2.